busy. Yeah, thanks for the question. <laughs> Dresden Main Station, final preparations before departure. I'm waiting for what's being called the Train of Freedom. In October 1989, special trains took thousands of East Germans from West Germany's embassy in Prague to the West. Now a train carrying artists, young people, and former East German refugees is going to recreate that historic journey. On board is Dresden musician Markus Rindt, one of the people who fled back then. I asked him why he's undertaking this journey again. He said back then, he just wanted to get to the West. I peppered my parents with questions about how you could try to get into the West. And they said you couldn't because there was a border and I'd have to wait until I retired. I couldn't accept that. So even as a kid, I was thinking about how I could do it. Many of the people on board are from Eastern Europe. Alongside totalitarian kitsch, there's music and documents from the time around the fall of the Berlin Wall. I asked Mirko Zenewald, one of the organizers of the trip, if it's going to be an exercise in nostalgia or living history. Above all, it's so that young people who couldn't experience it firsthand because they were too young, have a chance to see what it was really like. So there's arts and culture here. It's not a historian's conference. It's something to see, hear, and touch. Markus Rindt is also not so sure where the journey's going to take him. His flight to the West 20 years ago was the most important event in his life. He wants to know what other people think of the refugees from back then. I've heard talk that the people who left with the trains 20 years ago were those who avoided things, and the brave ones were the people who stayed and achieved change with their demonstrations. They certainly did that, but I think the people who left in the trains also contributed to change. We've arrived in Prague, where there's a big reception. This is where, in 1989, the journey to freedom began for Markus Rindt and thousands of others. Unbelievable. This is real history. It's absolutely amazing. Who could have imagined this 20 years ago? Starting in the summer of 1989, more and more East Germans kept arriving at the West German Embassy in Prague, hoping to travel to the West. Markus Rindt is now watching what he experienced firsthand 20 years ago. This is the first time in 20 years he's returned to where his new life began. He and as many as 4,000 others lived in close quarters here. The German foreign minister at the time, Hans-Dietrich Genscher, announced that they would be able to travel by train to the west. Genscher, too, has returned to remember those events. If there are any words of thanks to express today, then they go to those who had the courage to leave everything behind and come here for the sake of freedom. The next day, I take the same journey as the refugees did 20 years ago. The refugees' biggest worry was whether they'd even be allowed into West Germany. The East German leaders insisted that the trains pass through their territory. Near the border, the trains were stopped for several hours. Police in Dresden were battling East Germans who hoped to jump onto the trains heading west. Let's assume it had all gone horribly wrong in Dresden and they hadn't let the train leave. Then all this here would have been over. It could have happened. So, of course, we were anxious whether it would happen or not. It was kind of touch and go. Young people today can hardly imagine the situation back then. These days, Europeans are pretty much free to travel where they want to cross the continent. I'm from Belarus myself, so of course it means a lot because at that time, like, the changes were happening all over the former USSR, and at this time we were becoming, like, free. Arrival in Dresden. There's music to welcome us. This is special for Marcus Lindt because this is his orchestra.
Here in the station, people can come on board the Train of Freedom, which now hosts an exhibit on the events of 1989. There were police and army troops standing along the entire route. It was all guarded. This touched us enormously. You could just cry. I wish many more people would think about this and be aware of what would have happened if the wall hadn't fallen. It's unimaginable. And then it's onward through former East Germany. Mirko Zenewald was 15 when he stood at Freiburg train station as a refugee train passed through. The whole city's here, my goodness. He was too young to jump on. Freiburg in Sachsen, Freiburg in Sachsen. In Freiburg in 1989, East German police used water cannon and dogs to break up demonstrations. A lot of people were bitten or otherwise injured, and the demonstration was dispersed violently, not peacefully. I'd like to mention the man who led the deployment back then, and who, until last year, worked in the Interior Ministry, not as a custodian, but as a department head, just below an undersecretary. That's something I at least do not understand morally. That may be legally acceptable, but it's something that's not right, and I think that offends a lot of Freiburgers. Mirko Zenewald speaks his mind, as he did 20 years ago. Not everyone in East Germany was courageous enough to do that. There was just this inner unease. Everyone was scared. A lot of people were leaving. And then what would become of East Germany if everyone left? It was worrying because so many had already left. Everyone was gone. Teachers were missing from schools. And we just asked ourselves, who was even staying anymore? Now it's just a few meters to the former border between the two Germanys. Everything was brightly lit. You could see the whole border complex, and it was clear. That's the West German border. It was absolutely logical. We reach Hof in the early evening. You can't see anything. Twenty years ago, the refugees were welcomed here by thousands of local residents. There was a celebratory atmosphere, but I didn't expect it to be the same now. I think it's really important that they did this, that it's not always just about the 9th of November, but also what led up to that. So this event was very important to me. The train of freedom has reached its final destination. It's clear to me that for a lot of people I met here, the original journey to the West was the most important event in their lives. <laughs>